One of Ferguson, Missouri's well-known black activists uh, has died. We told you this on yesterday. 29-year-old Darren Seals found shot to death in a burning car on Tuesday in St. Louis. He was one of the leaders of the Ferguson protest after the killing of Mike Brown by a white police officer in 2014. In fact, uh, Seals was one of the first activists who uh, was on the scene shortly after Mike Brown uh, was killed. Uh, he stood with and comforted the Brown family as they received word that a grand jury declined to indict off former officer Darren Wilson in Brown's death. Seals, who was also a rap artist, frequently tweeted about racism, police violence, and politics. Just weeks before his death, he described this encounter with police in a tweet saying, quote, 10 detectives pulled me and my 14-year-old brother over, pointed guns on us, and told me to choose your enemies." wisely. What's even more disturbing is that Darren Seals is the sixth black man in Ferguson to be found shot to death in a torched car in the last two years. Joining me via FaceTime from St. Louis is Carlos Bell, a close friend of Darren Seals. On the phone from St. Louis, one of Seals' fellow activists, Tef Poe. Tef, I want to start with you. Uh, obviously, a lot more uh, questions than we have answers in the death of Darren Seals. Uh, yeah, well, I think the community don't have too many questions. I think the community is clear on what's going on here. Uh, I think that, you know, from my perspective, Seals was clearly set up. Uh, this is a clearly, a, I don't even call it a killer, a murder. Darren Seals was assassinated by somebody. And, um, you know, that I'll leave it where it's at. You know, we're going to do what we got to do to try to find some answers because we don't expect the police force or anybody of any type of authority to really look into it the right way. When was the last time you talked with Darren? I talked to Darren August 6th. Uh, we talked briefly about some politics. You couldn't you couldn't talk to Darren about, you know, you couldn't speak with him without talking about, about politics. Uh, but we actually had a different type of relationship. He, he was managing a rap group named the Bottom Boys. And we talked about some meetings and stuff that he had with a few label execs. And, uh, I told him that if he needed a feature or anything for any of the records to go ahead and let me know. And we planned on hooking up and, and doing that. That was the last conversation I had with him. It is certainly troubling to hear that there have been six black men killed the exact same way uh, there in Ferguson, St. Louis. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's to the point now where, you know, out here in Ferguson and St. Louis as a whole, we, we don't have... Uh, any mixed conceptions about what's going on. You know, there's a lot of conversations happening in America to, today. You know, uh, we're talking about Trump a lot. We're talking about Hillary a lot. Uh, we talk about Black Lives Matter a lot. You know, the entire movement for Black Lives a lot. But the reality of it is that, you know, this thing started on the ground with the death of Michael Brown Jr. Um, and on a certain level, it's been co-opted terribly by people that, that aren't from here. Um, and, the, and D. Seals was a, was a forerunner in that conversation. He may not have said it the way a lot of people wanted him to say it, but in his mind, what was more important, the most important thing about this, this movement was keeping the power in the hands of the communities and the people that started. Carlos, I want to ask you about that uh, because uh, I, I, follow, I did follow Darren on Twitter. Uh, he was extremely vocal. He was very critical uh, uh, to, tef po, to Tef's point about uh, folks from the outside coming into Ferguson, grabbing the, as he said, grabbing the limelight. Uh, he also, uh, though, uh, was criticized for being misogynistic, for being uh, homophobic. And in the aftermath of this, uh, you've had people throwing accusations at uh, black lesbians there uh, in Ferguson, uh, trying to blame them for his death as well. Uh, and so it, 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 even though there have been folks who are saying, hey, when this guy criticized me, disagree with me, I still mourn his death. Uh, your thought on that as well in terms of how just, just all of this just back and forth that's going on as people are trying to figure out what in the world happened? Well, uh, my personal opinion, I think it's bigger than that. Um, I don't think that has nothing to do with the reason why Darren is dead. Like Tef, uh, just to piggyback off what Tef said, I believe he was set up. So um, to think about some type of argument he may have had with somebody here um, about, you know, their sexuality, I don't think that had anything to do with his death. I believe he was set up by a high power. And when you say he was, why do you, why do you believe that? Um, because in a way, in the manner in which he died, um, like no one really, uh, maybe I don't, a lot of people that's involved in the movement, 
we don't know where this place is like exactly offhand until we heard about Derek being dead. So um, it was kind of like a deserted place and where they found this uh, burning truck. And then for him to be shot and then set on fire, it's like, uh, that's not random. That's a, like a targeted hit, in my opinion. Um, when was the last time you talked with Darren Seals? I talked to Darren last week. Um, one of my friends, he's a, he's a rapper, and he just had a video to go over like 2 million views. So Darren reached out to me and asked me like, uh, hey, yo, Carlos, who is, um, you know, who is dude? Um, I want to connect with him because my friend, he's only 21. And that's what Darren liked. He liked working with the young, young people. He was about the youth. He was about his people in general. Um, do you, when you, when you look at what happened here, when you look at this uh, particular case, again, so many folks uh, say that there are uh, m more questions and answers. How is the community there rallying together? I've seen uh, vigils take place. How are folks rallying together to support one another? And are other activists fearful of their lives? Because again, Darren Seals was one of the most outspoken activists out there. What is the mood there in Ferguson, St. Louis? Right now, um, people hurt. We hurt. This was a big blow for us, you know. Um, like I said, I didn't only look at Darren as an activist or a friend. I almost looked at him as a brother. I met him three years ago. My brother, Kerry Ball Jr., was killed by the police. And me and Darren have been friends ever since. So we all hurt. And um, as you said, some activists are uh, scared, but or I have a little fear, but you have to when we uh, know who we're going up against or what we're going up against. But uh, we won't be quiet about Darren's death because Darren wouldn't have been quiet had it been me, had it been Tev, had it been anybody else. Darren would be vocal, would be loud, and we got to do the same thing for him. So right now, people are just basically still trying to wrap their mind around the fact that he's gone. And um, I'm really trying to like reach out to his mother and his brother because I just know how they feel if we feel the way we feel, as hurt as we are. Um, but Darren death won't be in vain and we won't go quiet about it. Last question for you, Tef. You are very vocal. You are very prominent. Uh, you're very public. Uh, are you concerned for your safety? No, not at all. And, and you know, if, if I would tell you one thing. If Darren would hear, hear me say that I was scared, he would slap the mess out of me. So, no, I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. And it's the same thing we've been doing since, since 2014, man. The city right here has pushed the ball further than any city has when it comes to resisting the police brutality, when it comes to exposing white supremacy, and when it comes to changing the conversation. And once again, through some kind of way, I was thinking about it yesterday, you know, all, all Darren was trying to do was change the conversation in some kind of way. I don't know, you know, that's the magic of this man, that life or death, he was going to do that. And he did it. So, no, I'm not scared. Ain't none of us scared. Tef Poe, Carlos, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll certainly keep following this story to see where it leads. Thanks, Brad. Thanks a lot. Rashad, I want to go to you. Uh, you were very involved in the Black Lives Matter movement um, there in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, this has to be uh, troubling for any uh, Black Lives Matter activist uh, in this country. I mean, definitely. When, when this story broke, and first of all, rest in peace to Darren. Um, I, I didn't know him personally, but I know there's a lot of folks in Minneapolis and the Twin Cities that did know this young man. Uh, for me, you know, it's one of those things you hear so much rhetoric from police unions um, about Black Lives Matter, people starting a war on law enforcement and different things like that. So it's no surprise to me that, you know, these people think that this was a hit. I mean, we've seen murders in Minneapolis, we've seen murders all across the country. What they don't usually come with is the car being torched. That sounds like evidence trying to be removed from the scene. Um, so so it's, not, it's not something that's going to put fear in me, but definitely something that we all have to wake up and kind of be cognizant of. This, Christian, this is real. Christian, we saw um, attacks against civil rights workers uh, in the 50s and 60s. Um, I don't care who you are, six black men in the same area, shot and killed and burned in a car, that's a problem. 
I'm deeply troubled by this. I think about the gentleman who filmed Eric Garner's death and how he's he has been targeted by the NYPD. He's faced arrest and I now, think, now he had to prison for four years. Yeah. And I think we've seen this pattern that people who are speaking up, using their voice, using their cameras to confront police violence have a target on their backs. I hope that the federal government will step in here and ensure that we're not seeing a hate crime uh, play out mm -hmm. in Ferguson. But what we need to press for right now is aggressive investigation mm -hmm. and, and we need to find out who's behind these murders. Christopher? Uh, first, I'll say, I mean, this is, of course, the sixth killing uh, of this nature in, in recent time, and uh, last time on November 14th was the last one. But this is a prime example. First, the fact that East St. Louis Police Department uh, in itself is a failed system. Reporters down there recently tried to contact the hotline. They found out that for a week the phones were not being manned. Um, I think it's ridiculous, and it, it goes to show uh, just a part of this major criminal justice system that is a complete failure. How are the hotline phones not answered for a week? And, of course, reporters went down to the police station in East St. Louis. They cannot answer basic questions. It, it's just incredible to me, and it's not fair, uh, I think, to of course, the nation as a whole, and of course, to the city of St. Louis. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.